how to make a modded Minecraft server so you can play Minecraft mods with your friends in 1.19. Well, in this video, we're going to go over every single step of creating your very own Forge modded Minecraft server so you can play modded Minecraft with your friends. Now, one thing I will say, this is only meant for your friends, your family, people you trust. It's not meant to be any sort of public Minecraft server, and that's because it's hosted on your own computer. Also, because it's hosted on your own computer, it is going to use your computer's resources. Modded Minecraft servers eat a lot of RAM and require a very good C CPU in order to be able to run on your computer, especially while you're playing Minecraft on that same computer, right? Think about it like this. Your computer needs enough resources to run modded Minecraft and run a modded Minecraft server at the same time. On top of all that, this is hosted on your own internet, so you're going to need decent internet and you're going to have to worry about things like security. That's why this server is only meant for your friends and family. Anyone who gets the IP address of the server we start in this video will be able to do things like DDoS you as well as figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, so it's important that you keep this as private as possible. With that being said though, what if you want a public server or you just don't want to have to worry about security at all? Or what if you want to be able to start a server in under five minutes or last but not least, you don't have a computer that has high quality hardware that can actually run a modern Minecraft server and play modern Minecraft at the same time? What if any of those are the case, right? Well, the solution to that is Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below the breakdown, .xyz slash Apex, to start a modded Minecraft Forge server in 1.19 in under 5 minutes. You can quickly add mods to that server and be playing with your friends in no time. They also have 24 hours, 7 day a week support, so should you have an issue with your modded Minecraft server at Apex, they can help you out quickly and easily. And on top of all of that, if you want to play a mod pack instead of just add individual mods, you can set up mod pack servers at Apex in one click. Literally just select the mod pack you want from a drop down menu and you're good to join your server. Apex has high quality hardware and ensures that your server will be as lag free as possible. On top of all that, we actually launched him so much that we also our own server, playedoutbreakdowncraft.com on Apex. There's no better way to start a Minecraft server. They take care of security, they take care of the hardware, they take care of everything. All you have to do is play on your server and add the mods that you want. So be sure to check them out at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start a modded server. The easiest way possible. But if you don't want to start a modded server with Apex, what do you do? You want to start one yourself on your own computer. Well, the first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below. That's going to take you here. This is the Forge tutorial on our website. Now, this is for how to install Forge locally, which you need to do, like be able to install mods for single player, and your friends will need to do that as well. So it's important you keep this and send this to your friends so they can install Forge. However, Let's go ahead and once you're here, click on the Download Forge button. This will take us to Forge's official website, where we want to make sure that Minecraft 1.19 is selected. As you can see, it's not, so we want to come over here to the left-hand side, click on 1.19, and click 1.19 again. Finally, we have MC 1.19 here, and under Download Latest, we can click on the Installer button. That's then going to go ahead and take us off to Add Focus, where stop! Don't click anything on this page whatsoever. Do not click a single thing on this page at all, except the red Skip button that's going to appear in the top right after about 10 seconds. As you can see, ours has now appeared up there, so let's go ahead and click on that red Skip button. When we click on it, Forge is going to download in the bottom left. Now, you may need to keep or save this file depending on your browser, but as you can see, it has Forge in the title, so it's 100% safe to keep or save Forge. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser and we need to go ahead and create a new folder on our desktop. So let's do that by right clicking on our desktop, creating a new folder. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it Forge Server. You can name it Forge 1.19 Server. Let's do that instead. But overall, you just want to name this whatever you want. Once you've got your Forge Server created here, your folder, I should say for your Forge Server, we want to go ahead and find the Forge file we downloaded. Now for me, that's going to be in my Downloads folder. To find that, click on the little Windows icon in the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen, or the bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. Type in Downloads. You have this Downloads file folder here. Open that up and in here you will find Forge. Go ahead and take this and drag it to your desktop just for ease of use. Once Forge is on your desktop, it might have this Java icon, but if it doesn't, let's see if we can open Forge anyway. Right click on Forge, click on Open With, click Java, and click OK. Now if you couldn't do that, what we want to do is download and install Java 17. Java 17 is required in order to run Minecraft mods, servers, anything to do with modded Minecraft or running a Minecraft server, and this is literally both, needs Java 17. So come here, download and install Java 17 if you haven't already. And once you have Java 17, you'll 
you'll probably be able to open up Forge. But if you can't, or if your icon still looks weird, run the jar fix. The jar fix is going to take all the files on your computer and link them back to Java, making them work correctly with Java. So once you've done that, we can finally minimize our browser. Again, right click on Forge, click on Open With, click Java, and click OK. The mod system install for Forge opens up, where first we need to install Forge locally. Like I said, Forge must be installed locally in order for you to be able to join your server. So let's go ahead and click on Install Client and click OK. It's going to download, install, do everything it needs to do to get Forge installed for Minecraft 1.19. After that is finished, we can install the server files. So let's go ahead, let this finish. And once it has, we can go ahead and click OK. As you can see, it's successfully installed. And now we want to open up Forge again. Right click on the installer, click Open with Java, OK. And now instead of Client, we want to click on Install server. And as you can see, you get this big red box here. And that's normal. What we want to do is click on these three dots on the right hand side. Then we want to, on the left hand side, click desktop and select the Forge 119 server folder you created, right? Whatever folder you created to store your server files in, click that one. Then click open and now the red box disappears and we can click OK. It's now going to install all the files we need to start a Forge server in Minecraft 1.19. So right now all the files are being downloaded, installed, and set up in this folder. As you can see, there they are. Once it is finished, it'll tell us that and we can move on with getting the server started. So as you can see, successfully downloaded Minecraft server and installed 1.19 Forge. Awesome. Click OK. That's going to close out of that. We can actually delete this Forge installer from our desktop because we don't need that anymore. Keep in mind though that your friends will need to install Forge 119 locally themselves on their own Minecraft version in order to join your server. Nevertheless though, let's go ahead and open up this Forge 119 server folder. When we do that, we can see here that we have run.bat, run.sh, and user JVM args. Disregard all of that except the run.bat file. Now, if yours doesn't have .bat at the end, no worries, it's going to be the Windows batch file under file type over here. Go ahead and double click on that run file, and when you do, it's going to go ahead and try to start your server. Except it's probably going to fail, and as you can see, ours has failed to load a ULA.txt. You need to get to the EULA, press any key to continue. So go ahead and do that, press any key. It's going to close out of that, and now we have this new EULA.txt file. Open that up, and in the EULA.txt file, make sure you agree to the Minecraft EULA here, which we do, and let's change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Go ahead and click File, Save. That'll save the EULA, and we can now double-click on the run.bat file again. Now, believe it or not, you have started a modded Minecraft server at this point. You can join the server, which we're going to do here in a second, but your friends can't join the server as it sits right now. As you can see, there's two ways to see the console. You can see it over here, preparing level world, and you can see it over here. These are literally mirroring each other back and forth, right? The same information is showing up in both of them, so it's kind of up to you as to which one that you want to use. However, once the server is started here, we need to make sure we open up Minecraft with Forge, which I'll show you how to do, and then once we do that, we can join this server. But right now, we are the only people that can join this server, so keep that in mind. How do you know when this is finished? Well, it will say done. As you can see, right there it is. It says done in the console, indicating it is done. Now, let's go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher and before you hit play we need to make sure we're playing Minecraft with Forge. You must be playing Minecraft with Forge in order for this to work. To do that click the little arrow next to the play button here and there it is Forge. Forge 1.19. If you don't have this go watch our dedicated Forge tutorial. We show you how to fix this. However, at this point, with Forge selected, we can go ahead and click Play. We're going to get this warning that we're playing modded Minecraft, and obviously we know that, so let's go ahead and click Play again to open up Minecraft 1.19 with Forge. Once we're on the Minecraft main menu, we can join this server super easily. And to join our modded server, all we need to do is click on Multiplayer and then click Direct Connection. Then in here, the server address, we just want to enter in local host exactly like that local host all one word click join server and on the left hand side there we go we join right on in to the modded server boom here we are in game my fov is a little off there but we're in the server now we are good to go we can op ourselves so come over here to the console and type op and then our username whatever your username is so op space whatever your username is hit enter and boom we're now opt we do things like game mode creative now right the reason I'm doing that is I want to break some of these blocks pretty fast, place down some blocks, stuff like that, just so you know that uh, we're back here on this server later on, right? So you can kind of tell I've uh, I I've wrecked some havoc here, <laughs> which is what we want to see, right? So that is so we know later on we're on the same server. Now, you can join your server this way. If you do have issues joining your server, by the way, 
Using the localhost method, it might be a Windows Defender issue, and that's probably the issue as well later on if your friends can't join your server. Luckily, in the description down below, we have an in-depth guide on how to allow Java through Windows Defender. It goes kind of over everything you need to know in the description if you do have issues with that. Nevertheless, though, how would your friends join your Minecraft server here? Well, in order for that to happen, you're going to need to port forward your server. So. Let's go ahead and do it. The first thing we need to do to allow your friends to join your server via port forwarding is by clicking disconnect and closing out of Minecraft. You don't have to do that, but what you do have to do is stop your Minecraft server. So come over here to the console, and the correct way to stop a server all the time is in the console, type stop, right like so, and hit enter. And then it's going to close down everything and get rid of that. That will also allow you to make sure that it shuts down properly. You don't lose any data or anything when you're stopping your server. From there, we also need to get some information. So to do that, click the little Windows icon, Pop up to my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. Type in CMD, right like so. You have the command prompt. Open that up and then in command prompt here, we want to type IPCONFIG. IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. This is going to give us a bunch of information here and we actually want to just take some notes from this page. I'm going to do that in notepad and we need two things. We need our IPv4 address, which as we can see is right here. And in my case, that's 192.168.1.16. And then we also need our default gateway, right? So default gateway, and we can see this here. Now, I just have numbers next to my default gateway. If you have numbers and letters, there's going to be another line under those numbers and letters. That's what you want. You want the one that's just numbers, not the one that's numbers and letters, if you have that. So 192.168.1.1, right like so. And now we can go ahead and close out a command prompt because these are the only two numbers that we need. Next, we need to open up our browser and right up here at the top of your browser where you would normally type in breakdowncraft.com, youtube.com, whatever you would normally type in up there. You want to go ahead and take the default gateway and copy and paste that. So as you can see, default gateway, enter, and boom, we get a login box. Now you might get something that looks a little bit better than just a login box that pops down from the top of the screen. You may get something that is actually in a nice GUI. You may just get a login box, but it's in the center of your screen. It just kind of depends on the router that you have, but you will get some sort of login box. What do you enter in here? Well, your router's username and password. And if you don't know your router's username and password, we have a link in the description down below that will take you here. This is how to find your router's password it goes over everything you need to know to get your router's passwords set up and basically find your router's password. And as you can see, method one through three, four, five, go through each method one by one. Start with method one, go to method four. Most people find their password by method four. Some do have to contact their ISP though, but most people find it by here. So once you've got your router password, you can come back over here, enter in your router's username and password, and then log right in. Once you log into your router, it's uh, probably gonna look completely different from my router, and that is perfectly normal. Luckily, we have a guide in the description. This is how to port forward on any router. It has a text tutorial, but most likely you're going to want to just use the video because the video goes through all the most popular routers on the market today. It goes over everything from Netgear to Linksys to Verizon to AT&T, so many different routers that are out there, Cisco routers, all of that stuff. And even if your specific router isn't in that video, I'd still recommend watching through it because there's probably a router like your router in that video. Most routers use similar software, so watch through that and you'll pick up all the terms and things like that. And then once you get into your router, you'll be like, oh, this is like this router or this router or another router or something like that, right? Nevertheless, I'm also going to give you a bunch of common terms for port forwarding as we kind of do it in my router. Now for you, it may be an advanced, it may be an admin, it may be in the advanced tab and then the admin tab or the admin tab and then the advanced tab. It could be called port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be called NAT forwarding, NAT it could be called NAT Gaming, NAT Gaming. It could just be called Apps and Gaming. It could be in your Security tab as well. It's very common. Or your Port Forwarding, Single Port Forwarding, or Port Triggering areas, right? So for me, it's in Advanced, and then it is in Advanced again. And then finally, it is in Port Forwarding slash Port Triggering. Now, I already have a Minecraft Port Forward here. I'm going to delete that. And what we want to do is add a custom service. Now, for me, I have to click Add. You may have to click new port forward or something like that, or maybe you'll just have a big list of empty boxes. And if that's the case, go with the first empty string of boxes on your router. But no matter what, you'll have a service name, an ID, a name, an identification, something that's basically just an ID of what this port forward is. We're gonna enter in Minecraft there. Now for protocol, you wanna do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. And if you can't select both for whatever reason, just do this twice. Leave all the information the same, but just do it once for TCP and once for UDP. But if you can select both like we can, 
do that. Now for anything involving the word port, as you can see, P-O-R-T, you want to enter in 25565. So 25565 for external port. For internal port, we want to do 25565. Five. Now, if it's outside port, inside port, port one, port two, doesn't really matter what it is. If it involves the word port at all, 25565 is the answer. Last but not least, we have an internal IP address. This may also be a device dropdown for you. Either way, you want to either select the device that you're starting your server on or enter in your IPv4 address. In our case, 192.168.1.16, right like so. Now, we could also select this from our basically drop down box here by clicking here, right? That is our computer and you can confirm that with the IP address. So nevertheless, those are the ways to do that. Now, some people may have an external IP, but guess what? If you don't have an external IP, you still need your external IP address. And that's because that is how your friends are going to join your server. Now, I don't need that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply, save. But if you do have a public or external IP address, you need to get this address here from the description down below. Of course, this is your public IP. IP address. And it is blacked out for us. You can only see 177 at the end, but you can see all the information that someone can get from your public IP. Your county, your region, your city, down to your latitude and longitude coordinates can be grabbed from your public IP. So it's pretty important that you don't give this out to anybody and everybody. So go ahead and make sure you copy this from our website. If you do need it back on your port forward, come back in here, enter it, save, apply, make sure you save that port forward. And then finally, we can minimize our browser and we can join our server. So I'm going to go ahead, start the server by double clicking on the run.bat file. I'm also going to open up Minecraft. Again, making sure I pay attention that I'm opening up Minecraft with Forge. You must open Minecraft with Forge for this to work. If you uh, don't open it with Forge, it's just simply not going to. Nevertheless, I'll meet you once Minecraft is open and we can join this server. All right, so here we are. Minecraft is open as well as our server. So Minecraft with Forge is open. Our server is open on the left as well. To join it, just click on multiplayer, direct connection. Now, this is how your friends are going to join. They're going to join via a public IP here. Now all you can see is 177. We have blacked out everything else because, well, you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. This server is meant to be private, as you mentioned on the front end of this video. However, give this out to your friends, your family, and they'll use this IP address to join your server. Now, you might be able to join your server, like we are right now. We're joining our server via our public IP address, but it's not a guarantee. And that's because uh, it's kind of doing something weird right now. It just connected back to our computer through the internet, right? And some internet service providers honestly just do not like that whatsoever. So if that's the case, you might not be able to do that. But that's okay. As long as your friends can join via your public IP, it doesn't really matter because you can always join via local host like we did earlier in the video. And uh, that works just as well, right? That's going to give you on the same server. You can join via the local host and your friends can join via the public IP and you will be able to have no issues and be able to play together. So keep that in mind. But as you can see here, we do have our kind of blocks. We've got our inventory has blocks and we're in the same exact location as we were earlier, indicating this is the exact same server. If your friends do have any issues joining via your public IP, it's probably because there's an issue with Windows Defender. You can check that out in the description down below. That link is there and you can see how to set up Windows Defender basically to allow Java and people to connect to your Minecraft server. If you do have any questions, let us know in the comments. We'll try our best to help you out. But also keep in mind that the easiest way to start a Minecraft server is of course Apex Minecraft hosting. First link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash apex. It doesn't require any port forwarding, doesn't require anything. Literally, you just get an IP address and you can join your server. One click installation of mod packs. So much to love about Apex. Again, first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash apex. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. But nevertheless, we'll see you in the next one. My name is Nick and I'm out. Peace.